These are my Gilda Radner artifacts. There's a piece of Gilda's high school, University Liggett in Detroit. My Gene Wilder Memorial and Golden Ticket, Wonka Bar. The autograph that she sent me back in 1989. And those are two ties that were sold by Gilda's Club to raise money. So if you look, there's a little Roseanne, Rosanna Danas. I'm driving down Windermere Street in Detroit. is the family home of Gilda Radner growing up. This is where the Radners lived. So Gilda was born June 28th in 1946 here in Detroit to Jewish parents, Henrietta, a legal secretary, and Herman Radner, a businessman. Uh, Herman Radner, I knew he owned a hotel downtown that was turned into apartments uh, off of Woodward Avenue. She had a nanny named Elizabeth Clementine Gillies, who she called Dibby. And, uh, and that was who she based the character, Emily Latella, on. Never mind. She had uh, an older brother named Michael lived here too, and she attended the University Leggett School in Detroit, which is a very nice school, and it's not anywhere near here. It's, uh, as miles go, I don't know, but it's not 10. It's quite a distance from here, and uh, I'll show you that later, but that's where she went to high school, and that's what uh, she ended up talking about in the movie, uh, Gilda Live, her one-woman show. Gilda said uh, during her childhood, she battled eating disorders. I, I coped with stress by having every possible eating disorder from the time I was nine. She was close to her father, who operated the Seville Hotel. That's what it was, the Seville Hotel. And a lot of famous nightclub performers uh, performed there, and he took her to New York, to Broadway shows, etc. When she was 12 years old, her father developed a brain tumor. He was bedridden, unable to communicate, and remained bedridden until two years later when he died. Now we're in Gross Point, Michigan, and this is the former location of University Liggett High School. And this is the high school that Gilda Radner graduated from in 1964. The, I believe she was the last person, or the last class to, be, to graduate out of this school because then they moved about, right about a mile and a half from here. And then I was told by someone who works at that school that, uh, that this has been sold off and uh, it's going to be condos or something. But uh, this is where her high school was. And if you ever saw the TV show, um, or the, uh, the, the live show called Gilda Live, uh, she talks about being in high school here and, uh, and where she met her first boyfriend and they, she used to go to the prom here and, uh, and then there was this terrific scene where uh, her, her, her show uh, shows her uh, in high school in a gym and she sings a song about her first love or the first romantic time that she had. So those, uh, those dances that she used to go to, it's a thunderstorm rolling in, as you can hear, we're in this building and she sang that great song, Honey, Touch Me With Your Clothes On, which sounds funny, but uh, it was good. And now it's condominiums. So, Gildas High School. Gilda graduated from Liggett and went to U of M in Ann Arbor, but she dropped out senior year, went to Canada, started working with uh, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, and uh, on Godspell, and then Second City. She dated Martin Short there for a while. She and her husband, Jean, met while they were filming Hanky Panky, 
and uh, he pursued her quite aggressively even though she was married to a man named G.E. Smith. Ultimately she divorced G.E. Smith and got together with Jean. In 1984 they got married in France. Now, cancer ran in her family. It claimed her grandmother, her aunt, and her cousin. She once said that she'd been having cancer premonitions since she was 12 years old. Unfortunately, she was right. When she was filming with Jean in London, she started getting ill and saw several doctors, and it wasn't until it was probably too late that she was finally diagnosed with ovarian cancer. In 1988, Gilda and Jean moved to Los Angeles into this house on our right. Can I help you? No, I'm just doing a little piece on a former resident of this house. I'm not getting any pictures of the house, I promise. I'm just doing a little piece on uh, Gilda Radner. So I won't be a second, okay? I'm not going to... can't leave your car there. Uh, no, I promise. I won't go on the property, okay? Thank you. And I won't be long, I promise. Thank you. I appreciate your understanding. In 1988, Gene Wilder and Gilda Radner moved back to Los Angeles and took residence in the house that is uh, behind these gates now. And uh, it was here that uh, she was living when she was making her last television appearance on the Gary Shandling show, uh, where it was supposed to be her big re-entry into television, and it was, there was hopes that actually she was going to have her own show after that. Uh, but it wasn't to be. She was living here when her cancer returned and she checked into Cedar sinai Hospital and never checked out. And this is where Jean was living at the end. And no doubt Jean left this house that morning when he was called to get to Cedar to, to see her for the last time. And it's interesting because on her death certificate, it has their address as Fairfield, Connecticut. But it was relevant enough for them to amend it to show this address. So Gilda lived here until she died on May 20th, 1989. Across the street is Cedars Sinai Medical Center, home of the Steven Spielberg Pediatric Wing the Barbara Streisand Women's Health Center, the Johnny Cochran Brain Tumor Center, uh, Max Factor Tower, there's right in front of us is the Dr. David Saperstein Critical Care Tower. And in this hospital is where Gilda Radner, as we knew her, ended on May 20th, 1989 at 6.20 a.m. According to Gene Wilder, she went in for the scan, they sedated her, and when she came back, she remained unconscious for three days. Wilder said that he stayed at her bedside into the night, sometimes sleeping over. Finally, a doctor told him to go home and go to sleep. And at 4 a.m. that Sunday, a friend who was a doctor called him and said, come on, it's time to go. Wilder says, when I got there, a night nurse, whom I still want to thank, had washed Gilda and taken out all of the tubes. She put a pretty yellow barrette in her hair. She looked like an angel, so peaceful. She was still alive, and she laid there. I kissed her. But her breathing became irregular, and there were long gaps and little gasps. Two hours later, Gilda was gone. While she was unconscious, I never said goodbye. From here, Gilda Radner was taken back east. On May 24th, there was a small funeral for Gilda back in Connecticut, and she is buried there in Long Ridge Union Cemetery. Her tombstone says, Gilda Radner Wild, comedian, ballerina, 1946-1989. Family members requested that in lieu of flowers, donations be sent to the wellness community. Gene took it upon himself to warn others about detecting ovarian cancer early, and in 1993 he opened up Gilda's Club in New York. It provided counseling and support to women who, uh, who have cancer. They were sort of like a, a group called the Wellness Community, and in 2009 Gilda's Club actually did merge with the Wellness Community to form the Cancer Support Community, and, uh, and they still exist, and a lot of the local branches still call themselves Gilda's Club. On March 31st, Gilda Radner gave what was going to be her last interview for Glamour. About her husband, she said, He's never broken down and cried. He always had this real total confidence that I would be well, and I've never seen fear in his eyes. She also added, I've sat down with him and told him, You've handled this just about the best anyone could. And after I finish my book, it's always something. Every woman in the world will be after you. Trouble is, they're all going to have some major disease. 
Two years after Gilda died, he married Karen Webb, who he had actually worked with on a set a few years before he met Gilda, called See No Evil. They were married in September of 1991. They lived together in the house that he shared with Gilda. Gene himself died on August 26, 2016, of complications from Alzheimer's. I'd like to thank the Patreons who are supporting this page through the link below. There's also a PayPal link. I'm so grateful for you guys who have decided to put your support behind me. Uh, I want to especially thank Kimberly Flett, Ann Meyer, John O'Dowd, and Anne Marie Callahan. And Patreons, Ann Meyer, Cheryl Ann, Cope Miller, Jennifer Corner, Jonathan Julius, Sean Glosson, Ghosties, Randall Brown, Kevin Kearney, James Varkalis, Bradbury Anderson, Katherine Johnson, and Alyssa Jones. Thank you to everyone who's supporting this page, and, uh, and I promise I'll give you a shout-out. Thank you.